It's time for The Verdict. The Verdict is a lively discussion of current events and legal issues pertinent to Oklahomans. The Verdict is hosted by Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. The Verdict is brought to you in part by Betcher, Martin, Jean, and Jackson, when hurt people need help. Betcher, Martin, Jean, and Jackson in Ponca City. It's time for The Verdict. Good morning and welcome to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett. My co-host is Kent Myers. Kent is one of Oklahoma's top legal experts and today an interesting show involving our littlest patients. Yes, uh, it's second in the series on health related uh, matters. Last week we had the health commissioner uh, uh, Mike Crutcher who was talking about women's health issues and today we're going to make the patients a little smaller. We're going to talk about uh, <clears throat> some common problems with infants and we're going to focus on the uh, practice of orthotics and prosthetics. From now on, so I don't have to say that again, we're just going to call it the OP practice. Uh, but we're also going to be looking as a part of that into a, a malady called a plagiocephaly. Uh, it's a long word, but I think some of our viewers uh, will have heard of it. Uh, Mick, today we're going to be talking about deformities of the head or the skull in the very youngest of uh, uh, children and what can be done about it, what needs to be done about it. And all of our viewers uh, probably have children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and so on uh, that may very well be afflicted with this or have the potential to become afflicted with it. And I think we've got, uh, frankly, the leading expert in Oklahoma and the Southwest on it in the, in the uh, name of uh, Bill Berenger. We're pleased to have him. Uh, it should be a good show. Uh, we're going to have some shows in the future on other uh, health-related issues, uh, but today it's on uh, helping the littlest patients. Our guest is Bill Berenger. Our topic is the littlest patients. It's the verdict, and it's next. Just about. And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers is going to introduce our guest. We are genuinely pleased today to have a very good personal friend of mine, but, a, but an expert in his field. Uh, William J. Bill Berenger, a certified orthodist uh, here in Oklahoma City. Bill is a native of Pennsylvania, got his Bachelor's of Science degree at Edinburgh State College, uh, a Master's at Duquesne University, went through the orthotic uh, program at uh, Northwestern uh, University Medical School, is an associate professor at the University of Oklahoma in the uh, Department of Orthopedic and Surgery Rehabilitation is chief of the section of O&P, orthotics and prosthetics, at the O'Dona O'Donohue Rehabilitation Institute, has received many national honors uh, and offices in this uh, very interesting uh, practice dealing with uh, orthotics and prosthetics. And uh, we're pleased, although uh, uh, a little apologetic, we haven't had you on before, Bill, but we're really pleased you're here for your first verdict visit. Thank you very much for coming. Well, thanks for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Orthotics, prosthetics, what is that? What is the practice of those two? Uh, orthotics and prosthetics are sister disciplines. Uh, orthotics uh, deals with the evaluation of patients that are in need of external devices to prevent or correct deformities. In prosthetics, the sister science uh, deals with the care of uh, amputees in the provision of prosthetic devices or artificial limbs. Now you're a certified orthotist. Yes. Uh, what does that basically uh, qualify you to do? What, is, what do you do in the course of a day? Uh, during the course of the day, I spend most of my time with patients that have uh, uh, acute problems or chronic illness, children with uh, cerebral palsy, spina bifida, scoliosis, uh, and evaluate them for uh, these external devices that may uh, enhance their life. And one of the things I do, what we're going to talk about today, is uh, uh, children with uh, misshapen skulls. Now, that's called 
plagiocephaly and, and I mean one one type is called plagiocephaly and plagiocephaly uh, uh, the Greek translation of that means twisted head and these are infants uh, less than a year old uh, that have misshapen skulls does this have anything to do with sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS well as a matter of fact uh, in 1992 the American Academy of uh, uh, pediatricians uh, issued a statement uh, saying that children uh, less than a year old should spend uh, their sleeping hours on their back. This reduces the incidence of SIDS by about 40 percent which is significant but a side effect of that is uh, the great rise in uh, plagiocephaly. In other words, them laying on their back is causing, to some extent, uh, positional uh, misshapement or uh, deformation of the skull. Well, it, it can, and, and uh, parents will take that advice uh, to the letter, and children will spend a great deal of time uh, sleeping, and also during their uh, waking hours in car seats and, and other devices on their back. And basically what happens is uh, the skull gets pushed out of shape. Let's take a look at a graphic that you were kind enough to furnish us, Bill. Uh, it's uh, dealing with the deformational uh, misshaping. And uh, can you tell our viewers just generally what, what you're seeing there? Well, if you look at the photograph, if you notice uh, the, the uh, back of the head, one side appears flattened, and the other side appears to be more prominent. And if you look at the forehead, uh, you can see the same thing. Traditionally, uh, we call this a, a parallelogram shape. And you can also see that one ear is more forward than the other. Uh, you can also have a facial deformity with this, which you can't see in this picture. But this is the, uh, uh, the typical, traditional plagiocephaly mm -hmm. shape. Let me lead you into our next picture there. And a, the history of, of molding is quite interesting because there are some uh, cultures that seem to value the, the art of, of uh, what we would call a misshapen head. Well, there, there are, and in, in, uh, in some primitive cultures, uh, shaping the head certain ways enhances their social status. And there's been evidence of this in uh, the pyramid uh, hieroglyphs in Egypt. Uh, there have been uh, Native American cultures that practice this. Uh, but they do it uh, probably more radically than we do it. And uh, in their cultures, uh, it enhanced their social status, where, as in ours, we're concerned with uh, health issues. How long before a baby's skull hardens, is the term I'll use, and, and, mm -hmm. until it, uh, it's no longer at risk? Well, when we do this, it's a time-sensitive treatment. Uh, it has to be done within the first year of life, because at about 12 months of age, the growth areas of the skull begin to turn from cartilage to bone. And at that point, uh, it becomes impossible to change them. Well, is this a problem, Bill, of uh, this uh, positional uh, deformation <clears throat> of the skull growing incorrectly or the brain go growing incorrectly, or are they related? In that? Well, th there's some relationship. Uh, the mechanism for the deformity uh, is that the child lays on one side of his head and it gets literally pushed out of shape. To correct it, the skull does. The skull does. The skull does. Uh, the brain's a, a, a malleable tissue. To correct it, we rely on brain growth to push the skull back into shape. So the mechanism of uh, the deformity uh, is literally physically being pushed out of shape, while the correction relies on uh, not pushing it back into shape, but the brain growing. Now. The growth rate of the brain in the first year is about how much? I think uh, uh, most authors will say that uh, uh, head and brain growth in the first year, you, you achieve about 90% of it. That's why this is a really time sensitive uh, problem. Mm -hmm. Are premature babies more at risk? Uh, yes, it, it, they can be because in the neonatal unit, they may be uh, uh, laying in a certain position and not move because there's other more pressing health concerns mm -hmm. that, may, that may be life-threatening. Uh, so we see quite a few premature infants. What about babies who might have uh, been at an awkward position in the womb? Is, is that a factor? Uh, there are a small percent 
uh, especially with uh, multiple births, where uh, there is not enough room in the womb uh, uh, to accommodate, and they will be born with plagiocephaly. Let me jump in here and get us to our first break. We're visiting with Bill Berenger. We're talking about the littlest patients. We'll be right back. This is The Verdict. Worked on through that. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and Bill Berenger. Kent, where do we go to now? Well, I wanted to ask you a question, Bill, that I uh, don't know the answer to. Uh, is this genetic at all, this uh, deformational problem? Uh, if a mother has it, is it likely the child will have it? If a father has it, is it likely to be passed on? Uh, for deformational or positional plagiocephaly, uh, there is no genetic link. However, there are a few rare syndromes uh, that are connected with misshapen skulls where there might be a genetic link, but we, we typically don't see those. Okay. What type of treatment is there for an infant who, who has this problem? Well, the, the treatment is really a, a non-operative in nature, uh, and there are two things that can be done. Uh, in the first few months of life, uh, the parents should be advised to try repositioning the child to pay more attention to how the child is laying during the day and night. Uh, and if that fails, which oftentimes it does because it is difficult to position a child when they're sleeping, then the, uh, the second modality of treatment is uh, using helmet therapy. And uh, this is a typical, what we call, cranial molding device. Well, let's take a look at it here. I'll hold it and you can talk about it. How's that? Well, b basically, the treatment is <clears throat> we uh, take a mold of the infant's head and change that mold from an asymmetrical form to a very symmetrical form. And if you look from the top down, you can see how symmetrical this is. Mm -hmm. uh, the child is fit with the, this device. And hopefully, what it will do is encourage uh, growth into this new shape. So as the brain grows, it's going to push the, the misshapen skull into the uh, shape of the helmet? Exactly. It's a real passive correction. It doesn't squeeze the head or put excessive pressure on the head. It relies on a very natural process. It relies on growing into this new shape. How long do you have, would a child typically have to wear it? Most children wear it three to six months. That depends upon uh, their age, how flat they are, and uh, the rate at which they grow. How often during the day? I mean, is it a, is it a six, eight hour day thing or what? <clears throat> Most children uh, wear it uh, 23 hours a day. There's an hour off for uh, bathing or therapies, uh, but it's a it's a day and nighttime treatment. And what's just generally what's that helmet made out of? Is it heavy, light? Uh... Uh, it's very lightweight, and even children that are a few months old uh, do not have any trouble with head control with it. Uh, it's made out of a, 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 a polypropylene plastic on the outside and a foam on the inside. Mm -hmm. What about operative treatment? What's available there? Well, there are some children, although it's rare, that will have a growth center uh, fuse prematurely early in life. And uh, that's an indication for surgery. Uh, the helmet will not work on those children. And there are really two procedures. One's an endoscopic, which is less invasive. And then there's a uh, uh, cranial vault procedure, which is a little more invasive. Post-surgery, it's not unusual that uh, children have to be fitted with a, a post-operative helmet, which offers uh, protection of the surgical sites and will also encourage uh, further reshaping that wasn't occur uh, achieved during the procedure. Well, how does the helmet work if, for instance, post-surgery post there are screws remaining in the in the skull is, it, is there an irritation factor or? no uh, w when you take the impression of the child's head the mold of the child's head uh, you know where those uh, screws and are and uh, you can allow for it in the, in the fabrication of this 
What about uh, the child that wears glasses? Uh, I'm sure you're asked about how does this affect hair growth and, mm -hmm. and the like? Well, we do see uh, children that have special needs and uh, we've have, we have had some that wear glasses and this can be fit around glasses. Uh, it does not cause headaches. It's not painful to wear. Uh, I think it probably is akin to uh, an adult wearing a ball cap. It does not cause hair loss. As a matter of fact, uh, my friends in dermatology tell me that it stimulates hair growth, so your bald babies will get hair quicker. I wonder if you could get one of those for me. Well, <laughs> I, I don't think it works in, in adults, but uh, it, it, it does do that in, in infants. Uh, what, uh, what kind of results do you get with this treatment of, uh, of the helmet? Well, what I tell parents, and, and they're always interested in, in the result. What's the outcome going to be? And uh, it, it's difficult to look at a child's head and predict uh, what will happen. But uh, of all the children that we have done, and there's been over 900 of them now, uh, they all make a, a positive gain. And our goal is to have healthy children and children that uh, cosmetically look better than when we started. I have never had a child uh, that has not improved. What do you see about, do you see parents worried that maybe they have caused this problem by the positioning of their child and how do you deal with the, the, the feelings of the parent? Well during the initial evaluation, uh, especially with young parents, there is some guilt uh, and it's really misplaced. Uh, they have followed the, the pediatrician's instructions, uh, which they should do. Uh, but they didn't cause this. Uh, this is, this is uh, uh, an outgrowth of, of trying to prevent SIDS, which is not treatable. Uh, this is treatable, and we try and, and tell them that it's not their fault, we can take care of it. And uh, I think with a little understanding and a little patience that uh, uh, they work through that and, and start to feel good about themselves and, and their baby. What about insurance? Well, insurance, uh, it's difficult sometimes. Many insurance companies want to look at this as, as cosmetic restoration or sometimes experimental. We view it differently, so we spend a great deal of time working with insurance companies, working with patients uh, in, in appeals, trying to explain to them exactly what we're doing and that this is not a cosmetic restoration. Uh, these kids can have related health problems, uh, jaw malalignment, visual problems. Uh, and we're, we're so the idea could be that you could say you're going to have more problems later, maybe even more <clears throat> significant problems if you don't allow us to treat them at a young age? Sure, and, and some of the kids that are more severe, although uh, maybe insurance folks don't want to think about it, but there could be some psychosocial stigma later in life uh, with a misshapen head, and uh, we think that's damaging emotionally, psychologically, and, and we would like to take care of that when they're infants. Well. Uh, <clears throat> Bill, what advice would you give to a parent? Uh, should every infant be checked for this, or should you wait until you actually can observe what appears to be a misshapen head? What should the, the young parent do with the infant? Well, all these infants are going to be seen by a pediatrician, and all of our pediatricians are trained to recognize this and, and understand what it is. And I think a regular visit to the pediatrician and ask the pediatrician to please evaluate the shape of my baby's head. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything that is out of the norm, uh, he will be able to say, uh, this is a problem, uh, this is what we should do about it, and uh, proceed from there. And Bill, you office where? We are on the campus of the OU Health Science Center in Oklahoma City. And are there uh, similar type uh, operations that throughout the state or is this the only one in the state? How, how, how common is this? To my knowledge we have uh, uh, the only setup uh, to treat this and we really have the only team of people that look at this because I work with a plastic surgeon, a neurosurgeon, an ophthalmologist and some folks who are actually able to test for developmental delay. We've got a in the show. Bill, I appreciate you coming on the show. Your time well, ran you. really quickly. Thanks, Bill. Thanks for coming on. Kent and I'll be back with a final word after this.
Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers here to wrap up another show. An important show talking about our littlest uh, patients, the uh, children that we all are, uh, care most about. Uh, Bill Berenger, a recognized national expert, uh, residing right here in Oklahoma and treating uh, our littlest patients very well. I want to say hello to Bill's parents, whom I happen to know personally, Pete and Betty Berenger, Beaver, Pennsylvania. Uh, we're really hoping your day is going well, and uh, Bill did a fine job for us. Uh, uh, we uh, want next week to bring on uh, Harry Birdwell, the uh, athletic director for Oklahoma State University, so we hope our Oklahoma State fans, as well as all of our viewers, will watch and get acquainted with Harry Birdwell's first visit. Let me uh, lead our viewers to the website where they can get more information on Bill Berenger and his practice and all of the people out of the OU uh, Physicians at the OU Health Sciences Center. Their web address is www.ouhsc.edu. And of course, I want to remind you about our website, theverdict.tv. Log on and tell us a topic that you'd like to see on a future show. Final comment. Okay. Let's bring up a graphic. I want to show our viewers the uh, AAU state champions in 17 and under girls <laughs> basketball, and I think you recognize somebody there. I do. That that uh, that girl top, uh, second from the left on the top, that uh, looks like your daughter Rachel. It is, and she's with her teammates <laughs> who won the state tournament. They are leaving tomorrow for Orlando, Florida, and to play in the national AAU tournament 17 and under, and we wish the SCU hoops, uh, state champions, good luck. Well, certainly. Always want to see those Oklahoma teams do well in the national tournament. Indeed. All right. Ken, thanks. We'll be back next week with another show. This is The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, we're right here on KSBI with a show called The Verdict. And this Sunday, we're going to have Bill Berenger, a certified orthodist, who is going to talk about treating the littlest patients. It's The Verdict, Sunday mornings, 9 o'clock, right here on KSBI. It is all right. Is that all right, or we can do it again? Well, I've got two working. There we go. Hi there, Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, we do a show called The Verdict. And this Sunday, we're going to be talking with uh, Bill Berenger, a certified orthodist, who's going to talk about misshapen infant skulls. Sunday mornings, 9 o'clock, right here on KSBI. Join us for The Verdict.